the pieces are lining up for the most important agentic application to emerge. We're talking about the most important agentic application you can build and use. So why is this tool so important? Because it adapts with you, it writes code for you, it collaborates on your ideas, it helps you create, obtain, and organize information, and ultimately, it's an extension of your own mind. So what is this incredible tool that I'm talking about? What is this tool that we've been slowly building up to over the course of this channel, video by video? Of course, it's none other than your personal AI assistant. In this video, I'm really excited to share an early, early proof of concept that showcases the potential of having a truly personal AI assistant. Here's what we're gonna cover in this video here, the big ideas. First, I wanna take you right in to the proof of concept, a project I'm calling Ada, my personal AI assistant. So let's just jump right in. Let me show you exactly how this works. I'm working on this POC and the agent OS. Let's just go ahead and fire off. This is operating in main seven. Hey Ada, I have a question for you. I'm building an application on GCP. Does Google provide any text-to-speech services? Sure, Dan. Google Cloud's text-to-speech offers an API that converts text into human-like speech. Would you like to explore its features and integration options? Okay, nice, awesome. Yeah, Ada, let's go ahead and open up a browser and just go to Google's text-to-speech documentation. Done. I've run source tilde slash bash underscore profile and in browser. What would you like to explore next in the text to speech docs? Nothing there. Thanks for that, Ada. Um, what's the shell command to recursively read all Python files in the current directory? Okay, Dan, I've attached find name pi exec cat wash plus to your clipboard. What's next? Awesome. Ada, that's going to be it for today. Go ahead and exit. Thanks for your help. It was a pleasure collaborating, Dan. Until next time. Asterisk Ada exits asterisk. <laughs> okay, so there's the, you know, first kind of run through proof of concept of the personal AI assistant. As you can see there, just going through that process, there are some things that didn't work well, but there are a lot of things that worked really, really well. So if you're excited to learn about exactly how this works, definitely hit the like, hit the sub. We're going to be building and sharing our AI personal assistant over the course of this channel. This first version is super scrappy. I'm not sure it's even worth Worth sharing just because it's 300 lines of complete junk but in future videos we're going to be sharing early versions of a fully customizable personal ai assistant we're going to be talking about the high level architecture all the way down to the lines of code in this video we're going to touch on the high level of exactly how this works so go ahead hit the like hit the sub if you want to join the journey things are getting really interesting in the ai agent agentic workflow personal assistant space and i'm expecting that to accelerate let's go ahead and talk about some of the high level details right so that was a proof of concept of of ADA that is activated via voice, then it goes to text, then it goes right into an agent workflow. So let's talk about a couple of the key pieces that makes this work, and then let's talk about some improvements. I wanna talk about the PAR framework. This is a simple framework you can use in your AI assistants to engineer the high-level flow of how things work. Then I wanna talk about the kind of key part of that framework to help you choose your agent, which is this simple keyword AI agent router. This has also been called the LLM router. It's very similar in that it directs the flow of your application to to the specific AI agent flow that you want to run or the specific agentic workflow that you want to run. And then finally, let's go ahead and talk about flaws, improvements, iterations. What's coming next after this kind of first version that we're going to be building and sharing here on the channel. So. Let's talk about that PAR framework, right? How does this actually work under the hood? Let's talk about the PAR framework. So this is really simple, P-A-R, prompt, agent, response. You can imagine at the very beginning, you have your prompt, right? That was the uh, speech to text. So I spoke in natural language there and just asked my assistant a question. My assistant then took my prompt, looked at the contents of it and looked for activation keywords to activate our different sets of agents. And we'll get to exactly how that routing works in a second. That's where a simple keyword agent router comes in. But basically Basically your prompt triggers an agent and then your agent runs whatever your agentic workflow is. You could be using Langchain, you could be using Autogen, you could be using Crew AI. It doesn't really matter. It's an isolated function that does a particular unit of work. And then after your work finishes, we of course want to create a response that our AI coding assistant can say back to us and just report how do things go, if there was an error, or if everything worked properly. So this is exactly what this looks like, right? P-A-R, prompt, agent, response, and it starts with the 
speech to text. We then run our AI agent routing. All the interesting things happen in our AI agent router. In our previous video, we talked about the agent OS and how we can build composable, reusable pieces of agentic software. All of that goes in our AI agent routing. So you can imagine we have our speech to text running into one or more AI agents built on top of agent OS or whatever you're using, whatever you're building for your agent architecture. That all goes in the center, right? The routing decides exactly which one of your flows to run. And then after your routing runs, you want to create some type of response so that this loop is clean. We want concrete feedback when we're working with our systems. Our personal AI assistant is going to be no different. We need concrete results of our system. And then of course, after that finishes, we go ahead and loop back to the start. And you saw that exact loop happen right here. When you see our recording kick off once again, you can see the interaction time about 20 seconds there, the one above 36 seconds, and then the one above that, you know, took 20 seconds. But the recording is where our loop officially resets, right? And so you can see that happening over and over there. This sets up what I believe is the simplest architecture for building your personal AI assistant. You run a prompt, your prompt runs into your agent routing, and then your agent routing does all the cool agentic work there. And then at the end, we need some type of response, we need some type of feedback. We're building out a conversational workflow with our personal AI assistant. So then we run text-to-speech to get a solid response back out. That is the PAR framework. Let's talk about what's going on in this middle step because this is really where all the magic happens, right? AI agent routing. Let's talk about the simple keyword AI agent router. This is one of the simplest and most intuitive ways to route your prompts into different agentic workflows, into different AI agents. It all starts as most things do with just simple strings and functions. So it looks like this. So remember one of my prompts, Ada, let's open the browser and go to you know Google's text-to-speech service docs, right? Something like that. When this gets broken down using the simple keyword AI agent router, it looks something like this, right? So Ada, that was my agent's activation keyword. Let's open the browser. So you can see here, that's a keyword that actually does the routing. And then you can see here and go to variable, right? So that's whatever information that that specific workflow is gonna take in. And so if we hop back into the code here, we can see exactly what that looks like. So we have this personal AI assistant loop running. Basically while true, we're gonna run this key function here, record audio. We're gonna wait 10 seconds and collect whatever audio we can within that 10 seconds, right? That's why you saw this recording kick in here. And then we basically just wait 10 seconds, collect a nice chunk of audio, and then we operate on that. Remember, this is a proof of concept. It's just to get something up and running to prove out a personal AI assistant from end to end. So that's gonna be our record audio step. We then take that, write it to a file, get that transcript back. In future videos, we're gonna dig into specific services for text-to-speech and speech-to-text to satisfy both ends of our PAR framework, the prompt and the response. But the key parts here for our simple keyword AI agent router is right here. So you can see here we have the activation keyword and the activation keyword here, that's just the name of my personal AI assistant. So I just said Ada there. So that activates looking at keywords at all. So it's kind of a two-tier system. Once the activation keyword is found, let's go ahead and just do some separation here, clean this code up a little bit. I was really scrappy putting this together. But so once the activation keyword is found, we're going to run our on keywords function, right? So we now have our activation and this is where all the magic happens right? We parse out our prompt a little bit. We want to grab everything after our activation keyword. So if I said, you know, Ada, let's open the browser. It's going to cut everything before Ada and just take the prompt after that. And then we're running this function, get first keyword in prompt. So this is the really simple agent router. You can see here, we're doing some string manipulation. That doesn't really matter. What really matters is this function here. So this is our simple LLM router. This is our simple agent router. Each one of these functions contains your key AI agents, your prompt chains, and your individual prompts, right? Whatever level of LLM you need is going to be here. You can see here we have keys mapped to functions. Notice how in these keys we have both bash and browser. So if I say bash or browser in my prompt, my run bash command will run. And we don't need to dig into the details of all these functions. You can imagine there are prompts running. I'll throw this functionality into a gist just so you can read it, just so you can check it out. It's not going to be a complete module or a repo. You can see I have like seven main files up here. 
here. This is a rapid prototyping session and I have a bunch of random files going on here. I just need to get in here quick and dirty and, and build out the first version. So I'll have more concrete versions for you in the future. But you can see here, we have bash browser shell, we have question, we have hello, hey, hi, and then we have exit. And if you notice, you know, if you play back the intro of this video, we activated every one of those functions with one of these keywords. So, you know, we said, let's open the browser and that browser keyword is going to kick off a run bash command. It's kind of weird, but ideally you're going to want your AI assistant listening all the time in the background. So as soon as your assistant name is mentioned, the prompt kicks off and then inside the rest of the prompt, there's a keyword that specifies which function flow gets run. And so you can see here, you know, let's open the browser. So that officially kicks off my run bash command and my run bash command, of course, in the prompt has that browser bash alias that gets run. And then we have, you know, and go to variable. And in this case, I'm saying go to Google's text to speech service docs. And this is where the magic of, you know, the LLM really shines. The LLM knows to place the location that I want to go, the variable inside this as the full URL. So that's how we ended up on the, you know, cloud.google text to speech documents, right? So that's awesome. This is basically, you know, the simple keyword AI agent router. This helps you take your prompts and turn it into custom functions that you can run, which likely will have just pure functions. And then some of those functions will be individual agents. There'll be agentic workflows. There'll be prompt chains. And then of course, just some individual prompts, right? I'm not doing a ton of interesting things here. A lot of really simple stuff. You know, one of the cool things I did here with the shell command that you saw I actually had it generate the command and then respond. And then whatever that command was that they responded with, I, I used the paperclip library to get that directly onto my clipboard so I could quickly, you know, use that command. And I think that that's one of the huge advantages of your personal AI assistant. You're going to be able to take a lot of shortcuts. And then after that, I just ran a, you know, another completion prompt, another response so that I complete the loop of the PAR framework, right? Prompt, agent, response. We always want to have some concrete response. I want to know that my assistant did exactly what they were supposed to do, right? It kind of closes that feedback loop for us if we got back to the PAR framework, right? This keeps things nice and simple. It gives our system some structure to work with so that we know we are back at the beginning of our loop. Ideally, you know, when you're really using your personal AI assistant in the future, you know, this is running on a loop. You're just having conversations. It's, you know, popping up windows on the left, on the right. It's helping you manipulate data. It's, you know, giving you information in a modal window. It's writing code in the background, right? And you're seeing that code change live. Your personal AI assistant is going to be doing research for you. It's going to be writing docs for and with you, summarizing, helping you write. If I had to summarize why this is so important, it's because, you know, specifically your personal AI assistant, it knows you and knows your workflows, right? Like in the future, you'll have built out your own agent router and it knows exactly what you want when you say certain things. And things can get super meta when you let your AI agent modify this functionality, literally modify, you know, its own code to improve and work alongside you. <laughs> That's going to be in the future. I'm sure we'll cover that at some point. But right now we're taking one step at a time. We have the first version here of our personal AI assistant. So let's go ahead and continue. Let's go ahead and talk about, you know, we have a great framework for building our assistant with the PAR framework, right? Prompt agent response. And then we loop that. This lets us build our agent inside the agent routing. That's where all the interesting functionality actually happens. Sometimes we're just running a simple function that does something, but most of the time we're going to be running prompts, prompt chains, AI agents, and agentic workflows wrapped in some clean architecture like the agent OS, just like we talked about in the previous video. I'm going to go ahead and link both those videos in the description. Definitely check those out. On the channel, we're building on a lot of the work that we do over time, just like we do when we're engineering. Knowledge stacks, this content stacks, everything we're doing on this channel is stacking up to something big. So that was the PAR framework. We also have the simple keyword AI agent router. There are definitely way more complex ways, way more intricate ways to do this, but essentially it's all going to do the same thing. Given your prompt, you have to figure out how you want to route your prompt to real actions that you can take, right? And in this case, I'm just using this simple keyword router functionality that then gives back the agent to run and the agent keyword that ran. If no keyword was matched, we just go ahead and skip. Again, this is a proof of concept. There are many more intricate ways to do this. This approach definitely gets us 80% of the value. This is a great proof of concept. It's a great first version, but what's next, right? How can we take this to the next level? How can we improve our personal AI assistant, right? So just a couple of things to mention here. Text-to-speech and speech-to-text is pretty slow. I'll be looking at out and researching and you know experimenting with fast services 
for you so that we can quickly get that response. If you saw here in the finalized video, I'm definitely gonna edit these down just to kind of get the point through, but this interaction time took 20 seconds. This one took 36 seconds. This one took 20 seconds. And really the back and forth between you know my prompt and my assistant's response is really only about 10 seconds here. Some improved text-to-speech logic would also be good here. I'm just doing 10 second chunks. It's working pretty well, but as you're working throughout your day, you don't wanna to have to wait for the beginning of the 10 seconds to start speaking, right? If I kick this off again, we can see this is gonna be the beginning of our 10 second chunk everything we say right now in this 10, 10 second interval is gonna get picked up. So it's gonna miss that last chunk and anything we're saying right now is not gonna get picked up, right? So you can see here, you know, everything we're saying right now in this 10 second interval, it missed that next section, right? And so only four seconds there, this was the time it took to send to our, you know, speech to text service, come back and then see if there were any keywords, right? In both of these sessions, including this one here, right? This next transcript, there was no keyword said, right? I didn't mention a at all or any actual um, keywords to run, right? But you'll notice I just said ADA. And so now in this next upcoming chunk, it's going to look for an agent keyword, but it's not gonna find one, right? So you can see here, no agent was found for the given prompt. So there are some improvements to be made to that loop right there. Again, perfect concept, not a huge deal, but we'll definitely want to improve that as time goes on, right? And there are lots of ways to work around that. You know, the next improvement, we wanna add some composability, reusability with an agent over OS like architecture. We talked about this in the previous video. This is going to make our agent layer. So wherever we're actually calling our agents and our function flows, this is gonna make this portion really, really cool, really, really smooth. And you can imagine we're gonna have, you know, quite a few more keywords that activate AI agents and agentic workflows. As we're building those out, we're gonna be wanting to, you know, reuse and compose these. That's where using an opinionated agentic architecture really comes in. So I'm gonna be using the agent OS and building up the ideas we shared in that video and in that architecture. So I wanna improve the human in the loop tooling. There are tons of really cool opportunities here to run one of these workflows. And then when our assistant needs more information for us, for instance, like I have this idea to, you know, build out new front end components on the fly, right? So we activate, you know, building out a front end component here on the fly, you know, with some component keyword that then kicks off a workflow. Inside that workflow, you know, our agent can pop up a modal, it can give us a file so that we can complete our prompt. It can ask us a question about what we want to have built. So a lot of opportunity here for human in the loop tooling. And then of course, we want more agents. We want more capabilities. This is where your personal, you know, all the prompts, all your prompt chains, all the work you've been doing so far, that's where all that comes in, where you come in and you build out, you know, your actions that run based on your system. I'm really excited about this. I hope you can see the value in the personal AI assistant. I hope it makes sense why this is the most important agentic application that you and I can build and use. We're gonna be covering this a lot on the channel. This is gonna be one of our main topics in addition to building great agents, in addition to AI coding assistance. So if you enjoyed this, if you got value out of this, you know what to do, hit the like, drop the sub, stay focused, keep building, and I'll see you in the next one.